Hey everyone, this is Real Terrain Hobbies making all things miniature. My name is Neil and today we are finally returning to a very old project that I completely abandoned after it being my most successful project ever on YouTube. Yes, today is the day we finish a very old and ancient relic to the channel, the Medieval Tavern. So what's the story here? Why did the most successful video slash project I've ever done on the channel get, well, ditched? There's a number of factors that come into play here and well, really it was never my intention to ditch the project. Initially the reason I temporarily put it to the side was simply, uh, well, burnout. Burnout namely for being new to the hobby and making a very common mistake most make when new to the hobby and that is taking on a project that is just too big and too ambitious rather than starting small. Yes, if you stuck with me since the very beginning and go back to my earliest videos, please don't. They're terrible. All right, terrible may be a slight exaggeration, but for example, I liked to say this a lot. So as you can see, I went ahead. Uh, so you can see here, I just went ahead. Next, I went ahead. And I also went it ahead. It was time to go ahead. So we can now go right ahead. ahead. And I also went, went ahead. ahead. I went ahead. to prime. go ahead. And you can see I had gone ahead. So for fun and games, we're going to have a little competition. Yay! And the first 10 people to say how many times I say the word ahead in the video just above here, you will get a completely free ship to you directly on my dime Real Terrain Hobbies coffee mug. And by the way, merch plug down below. You can check out my merch. I think it's pretty cool. And if you want to pick something up, it's going to support me and the channel. But yes, if you want a free mug, head over to the video, count how many times I say the word ahead and put it in the comments below. Now, having said all that, this is one of my earliest projects. And before that, I think all I had under my belt were these little tree bases. And also just assembled these cool little MDF kits, which I absolutely adored. Oh, and this little guy here. And that's it. That was the extent of my experience. Yet I wanted and thought I had it in me to complete my own intricate medieval tavern completely from scratch. Hey. I knew what I was doing. All I had to do was piece it all together. I had it all figured out in my head, easy. I didn't know it'd be difficult, but I knew I could tackle it. Well, shingles. Yeah, shingles, the bane of every crafter's existence. It wasn't just the monotonous task of creating a billion tiny itty bitty little shingles, four boards too. Oh, and uh, a million little styrofoam stones, it's about a couple thousand wood planks to make this actually look like a medieval building. And of course I had to go and make interiors for absolutely every floor, including the rafters. <sighs> All right, so maybe there's not literally billions of shingles and actual millions of floorboards, but for someone as inexperienced as I was, this is how things start to quickly feel and the dread at tackling the massive scope of work I had in front of me, including the pressure to do all that work well, had me shelf the project for a good month, which turned into a year, which turned into, well, here we are. All right, it's time to slow down, take a deep breath and assess what needs to be done here. So basically all the floors need some work aside from the main floor. And what I'm gonna be doing is batching the work. So if there's uh, some flooring that needs to be done on multiple levels, I will do that. If there's plastering, I'll do all the levels together and so on and so forth. So as we're doing that and tackling the second and third floors, you can see here on the third floor, we've been using balsa wood. Now balsa wood's an incredibly soft and easy wood to work with. And we're gonna be using that to add on the wood elements for the interior walls. Earlier, I added plaster of Paris to the inside walls of the second floor. And we're gonna be doing the same here on the third, as soon as we stain these wood pieces. Now I'm using an oil-based stain. You don't have to use an oil-based stain. This is just what I decided to use initially so I stuck with that for the rest of the project here you could use acrylic paints as well if you wanted 
Now, once again, I'm gonna be adding the plaster of Paris onto the third floor this time in between each of those timber elements now that we have them stained. Alright, so now we're going to be painting the walls of the interior and the exterior. Now, painting is one of those things where my confidence has since improved since the start of this project. However, something to really take into consideration is the materials that you are going to be painting on. So plaster of Paris is extremely porous. It's not the same as painting on plastic and it is very, very absorbent. So I had to do some experimenting here and what I found to be really effective is to have a very watered down boff color, kind of a beige, which is what I've got here. Very watered down and as you can see it absorbs right into the plaster of Paris. After that I dabbed on using a sponge white. And then on top of the white, what I would do is water that down and this is going to help with the plaster Paris knot just kind of sucking all the uh, pigment and all the paint in right away. If you first wet it down with water, it saturates it and then you can apply on a wash. And I've got here a brown wash. It's the same as the uh, Aerograx Earthshade from Games Workshop. I made this myself and because the walls are already saturated, it's very easy to spread this around and blend it in nicely. All right, so now that we got the plaster walls all painted up, it's time to move on to the exterior door. And for that, we're gonna be doing some intense blacksmithing. But before we get into that, it's time to thank this video sponsor, Loot Studios. Now, Loot Studios designs and provides digital STL files for your 3D printer. It's a monthly subscription service with a new theme every month. And they offer a variety of miniature types, such as heroes, monsters, NPCs, and terrain. New subscribers receive an additional tavern-themed welcome pack, which they've just upgraded to its 2.0 version and what you are seeing here in front of you. They brought in an additional eight NPCs and three objects for a grand total of 67 miniatures for the first time. So subscribers. Now their models come in two scales, 32 and 75 millimeter and are pre-supported in both scales. So seeing as we're making a tavern here, what couldn't be better suited for such a project than Loot Studios Tavern Welcome Pack? This isn't even everything that's included, yet you can see the massive variety of D&D heroes and NPCs as well as very suitable tavern terrain. I was super, super excited when Loot Studios contacted me and I saw their welcome pack. I knew this was just gonna be the perfect complement for this build. As you can see, their models are highly detailed and super realistic. So check out the link below and go sign up for Loot Studios today. All right, I promise you blacksmithing. It's time to get on our blacksmith. Life. All right, so now with that intense blacksmithing session over, this is what we're left with, some flattened wire. This is actually wire for rebar 
for twisting that together and you can get that at your local hardware store. I got this stuff in two gauges. This is the thicker stuff here. We're gonna be using some thinner stuff later on and these are gonna act as the hinges for our wooden doors. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first decided to use metal for these doors, I thought it was just the coolest idea ever having some actual authentic metal components in this project. I still stand by that. In my opinion, these are just the coolest little doors ever. So I'm using some smaller gauge wire here for the door handles. And as you can see, it takes a little bit of finesse with the needle nose pliers. But it's pretty simple little design and uh, as you can see it works well and is extremely effective and is just the perfect little accent for this building. Now it's time to do some flooring, which is a simple process, yet very, very time consuming. I did feel that my walls were a little too muddy, a little too rustic looking. So I'm using this Eldar Flesh, which is a Games Workshop dry brush paint. And I just dabbed it on and it kind of muted everything down and made it look a little less dirty and crazy and uh, just kind of finished it off nicely. And now it's time to move on to the part that we've all been dreading, all been waiting for, that is the shingles. At least everything else is done up to this point. We've gotten so much accomplished so far, now we can just focus on shingles, which is just mindless work. Uh, it's not very difficult, it just takes time, a lot of time. Uh, yeah, a lot of time. Also, now's a good time to quickly mention my Kickstarter. It is going to be launching very, very soon. I'm so excited for that. If you don't know what that's all about, check out the last video, but it's going to be some 3D printable terrain that is of the highest quality and the highest of detail. You're not going to want to miss out on that. And there's going to be a link below for you to sign up for the email list to be notified immediately as soon as that goes live. Now it's time to paint up our stones. We're going to be using a similar technique to what we have done earlier for this stone. So there are hints of blue in there as well as some browns and grays. So I start off by using the blue as the base coat. Then I go to a burnt umber and I'm sort of um, spreading these around kind of sporadically. Uh, it's not all just covering over where there was previous paint before. That just gives a bit of variety in the texture and in the color. And then I go and use a white dry brush on top of it afterwards and it ends up being pretty close to what we ended up with originally. And of course we need the uh, third floor to lock into the second. So what I'm doing here is I rigged up these little jigs. I'm gonna be gluing on the one piece uh, to match up perfectly up top, just as you see here. And then we're gonna take off the legs and there you have it. Now those two pieces of wood will fit perfectly into the layer or into the level below, lock into place, nothing's gonna slide around and it's the perfect fit. Oh, 
All right, now it's on to the windows. So I wasn't sure about how I was gonna do this. I was thinking of using a UV curable resin from my 3D printer. I've got some clear stuff, but I ended up using a two-part epoxy. This was actually recommended by one of my patrons who was joining me. We did a live stream while I was doing these windows and they have suggested uh, using a two-part epoxy. This is what Jeremy from the channel Black Magic Craft had used. So I'm using that, but it just wasn't looking good as it was. So I ended up grabbing this guy right here. This is a pencil holder that we've got. And the cross hatch on there was the perfect size and the perfect, uh, or the perfect scale for what I needed for these windows. And so you can see what I did here was use a clear plastic film behind, which are just some plastic sheets that I got from Staples, placed the uh, grid over top of that, and then applied the epoxy, the two-part five-minute uh, fast-drying epoxy over top of that afterwards. And yeah, just look at that. That couldn't have turned out better. So happy that I found this little pencil holder. Just perfect. All right, so it's on to painting up the shingles. So I'm gonna do a base of black to start, and then a light brown from there, a light gray, and then finally a dry brush with um, kind of a boff beige color. And here I'm adding in some weathering with some washes on the shingles, doing the same thing here on the side of the house. I also use the airbrush with some black just very lightly in uh, to create some contrast and some depth. And then I finally finish off again with a dry brush of the boff for beige. And that's it for painting. And what's a tavern without the tavern sign? So I'm just making this out of some basswood. This is a hardwood. I've got these little pieces of hardware thanks to Prop Fox, Tyler. Thank you for those that I'm gonna be using to hang the sign from. And then I just paint it up, do some weathering. And that sign just adds so much extra to this project and love it, absolutely love it. And I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons, specifically Jeff Brinkman, who's the all time highest supporter on the Patreon. Massive thank you to you for your loyalty and your support throughout the years, as well as Julian, who's been a loyal supporter and a good friend and brand new supporter and soldier of the Real Terrain Hobbies Royal Guard, Robin Boone. You guys are absolutely amazing. And again, massive thank you to all my patrons, every a little bit helps no matter what tier you're in thank you so much so it's only been about four years in the making I went and checked and it's been three and a half years since I posted the video for the first floor we did it it's actually done and I'm hoping you're all as pleased with the final result as I am. This is insane. This is one of the very first projects I've done on the channel and to finally have that complete is just such a, a good feeling. So thank you to everyone who's been with me from the start on this project. If you've been around since the beginning, that's incredible. If you're new to the channel, a huge welcome to you and I hope you stick around, hit that subscribe button. Also, remember my Kickstarter is quickly approaching, so sign up for updates using the link just below. And if you like these videos and what I do on the channel, completely free of charge to you, sign up on Patreon, support the channel, and become a member of the RTH family. We'd absolutely love to have you. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. You want some whiskey? Uh. Oh, you gotta stop been waylaid by enemies and must defend yourself.